How's it going, everyone? It's Abdali here, bringing you guys exclusive gameplay footage of The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening for Nintendo Switch. We are going to be doing the entirety of Level 3, the Key Cavern, thanks to our friends over at Nintendo for providing us the opportunity to play this game before launch. Now, they've only allowed me to give you guys about 10 minutes of gameplay footage, so we are going to cut and skip through some of the backtracking that I did in this dungeon, but stick around to the very end because we are absolutely going to show you the boss battle for this particular dungeon. I am super excited for this game. You guys can count on me to give you guys a 100% walkthrough of the game when it does launch on September 20th. So stick around, make sure you guys are subscribed and turn on your notifications. Anyway, so we're gonna be rocking through this area. It's gonna be super simple. The gimmick of this entire map is going to be finding four small keys in order to unlock the final area. So we have just beaten up some of the bombites over here. And if you make your way just straight north over here, you'll just battle some smaller enemies some little um, little slime guys and you guys can make your way downwards now what's also cool about this is that there's just so many new enemies that we haven't necessarily seen from the e3 demo so if you guys have not seen my gameplay videos of the exact e3 demo that we did go check those out they're gonna be linked in the description and uh, on the info cards as well so we've got this teleporting guy over here he's kind of annoying but there's no way that you can battle him right here simply because it's too early on in the dungeon so we're just gonna ignore him and we'll have to beat him up a little bit later on now moving in this area in order to get certain chests to appear you're going to need to beat every single enemy in a particular room so if you ever see like this little gray slate that's just chilling out out of the ordinary definitely look into seeing if any enemies will spawn so that you can get them but after we're done beating up these guys we can pick up a little power up over here there's a piece of power you can feel the energy flowing through you so you have a little bit of time where your attacks are going to be a little bit stronger so temporary power up that you can get uh, these little red guys are kind of annoying because they jump on top of you and it's not too fun but you can just swipe away and you can get them they're not going to do too much damage against you so you're fine so here's a guardian acorn it will give you pretty much double defense for a small amount of time so that's kind of cool a little temporary power-ups just like it was in the original Link's awakening okay so remember these guys they teleported left and right now as soon as you get into their small bubble uh, they are going to teleport and shoot a little star at you so what you're going to want to do is predict their movements get them to teleport one specific spot and then meet them there in order to hit them so that's when they're most vulnerable so you can do so by um, baiting them out and then attacking them or if you want to be a little more cheeky you can easily set up a bomb uh, tell them uh, force them to teleport over there and then blow them up but bomb hits are going to be two bombs and we're going to need all of our bombs in this particular dungeon so be very very stingy about when and where you use your bombs of course there are going to be certain pots in this dungeon that will infinitely spawn bombs so don't worry about that i'll show you where those are but you're going to need a lot of them especially for uh, the dodongo snakes that are going to be coming up here so you can see over here that these pots uh, are in the corner. You can absolutely use those pots to spawn some bombs for you. And here are the Dodongo snakes. Now, the great thing about this is that the Nintendo crew has actually 3D modeled these guys and added them to the little diorama displays. And I was always curious. I'm like, okay, well, I, I see them over here, but I'm not able to play against them in any of the E3 demos, but here we go. So what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to be very, very patient with these guys because sometimes if you put a bomb in front of them, they're not gonna eat it. So you have to be like waiting right in front of them and you have to see that their mouth opens up and then you throw a bomb into there and then they will blow up. So that's super easy. Uh, by this time in this build, uh, they had an empty bottle. So I can show you over here that you can indeed capture fairies with the empty bottle. And of course, if you lose all of your hearts, the fairy will revive you accordingly. So very true to the Zelda roots over here. Anyway, after beating the mini boss, you do have a warp point that happens over there. So it's a, I would say it's a convenience thing so that you can absolutely uh, backtrack a lot easier and find out. But after we beat the mini boss, we will have the access to the Pegasus boots. And the Pegasus boots are super awesome. That's uh, been one of my favorite power-ups for a long time. But the great thing about the Pegasus boots is that you're now able to break certain blocks by crashing into them. So if you hold the L button, you can uh, charge up a little bit of a run and then you can move from there so here's a little bit of a brick um, a brick puzzle but nonetheless you can crash through those specific blocks and then move on forward so yeah super cool now the even better part about 
the Pegasus boots is combining the Pegasus boots with the Rock's Feather. And the Rock's Feather is something that you get in one of the earlier dungeons. And if you combine the two, you can jump over huge gaps like this over here. Like normally you wouldn't be able to traverse that. But with the combination of Pegasus and the Rock's Feather, we're going to give ourselves a, a very cool attempt at that. And of course, you'll see a little wall over there that we can bomb a little bit later, but there's no point in doing that yet. So. I jumped a little bit too early. You got to go right on the edge, and then Link can flip all the way over. Man, that's super fun. Anyway, we're going to do the exact same thing in, uh, in order to grab the Nightmare Key, which is pretty much like the big boss key. So as soon as you have this, you have access to the Nightmare Door or the final boss door, whatever you want to call it. So now that we have two keys in our inventory, we are going to uh, warp back to the very beginning of the map. And that was pretty simple, so I just kind of gave you a quick cut. This thing, you couldn't get past it unless you had the Pegasus boots. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to charge into this thing. Because he does like a little bit of an area of effect wind energy that you can't get past unless you're dashing through him. So that's going to be our third key. Super easy. Very beginning of the dungeon. And then, of course, we're going to teleport back to this uh, one spot where we had that crack in the wall. And then by doing that, we can easily traverse and get our final... Uh, set of keys and of course our compass now these bombites are a little bit different because they have a countdown timer whenever you strike them and what you really want to do is you want to be able to just keep on batting them away with your sword if you walk way too far out of their range they're just gonna lose interest in you and they're not gonna go with that original countdown so you got to be playing them a little bit safer so right over here, we're going to get the compass of the level. Again, it's really not that important considering the fact that we kind of know the layout. Uh, but of course, if you're trying to collect everything in the game, then you might as well do that. Now, you'll notice that there's a little wall over here. You can bomb it. There's no like visual cue, but if you're on the top level over there, you'll be able to see downwards over here that that's exactly what you'll need to do. And then you'll have to backtrack that. So, of course, for the sake of time, we are going very quickly through this dungeon so that you guys can see this boss. Anyway, here's our last key. So once we have that, we're going to be all set. And then once we have four keys, we're going to come to this central area where you can see that we are going to need to spend every single one of our four keys in order to move on to the boss area. So spending those, not too bad. Moving on down here, we are going to have our first like underworld section of the map. So you can see that this... Uh, I don't know, like womp looking thing. And you can see a piranha plant from the Mario universe. So that's a super cool crossover there. I love that. Anyway, I wanted to see if he would spawn again, but apparently he didn't. Anyway, right in this spot, we're going to have three of these guys again. Uh, it's really all about just dashing right through them simply by lining yourself up in a straight line and then just cutting them down. You can use Rock's Feather in order to jump up in the air and grab those hearts. And then here's the last area before the Nightmare Door where we will fight the final boss of the dungeon. You don't have to worry too much about these keys. You just knock them out. You can get some like hearts from it if you need them. But anyway, here we go. Neener, neener, you can't find me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Neener, neener. Anyway, so uh, what we have over here is little droplets coming down. We can beat these guys up. Super easy. And you can see a shadow in the middle. Boom! There we go. He's here. It is none other than Slime Eye. So Slime Eye, this is like the remake of him from uh, the Link's Awakening on, you know, Game Boy. So you'll notice over here that he's a little bit different. Uh, what we're gonna have to do is use the Pegasus boots to slice him in half, and then once we slice him in half, we can easily knock out his separate eyes. And you'll also notice over here that he is going to absolutely stun the ground. So if you do have your Rock's Feather equipped, you can jump over that shockwave and then you won't be stunned and you can get some free hits over here just like I did over there. So yeah, super fun, relatively easy boss. He will jump up a little bit so that depth perception, you might like miss a sword swipe, but there you have it. There's the boss of the dungeon. Super fun, huh? And of course the obligatory full heart piece and you were all set and ready to grab the instrument of the siren. You guys remember which instrument is in level three? Some of you guys may. Anyway, it's right over here. It's the Sea Lily's Bell. Oh, this thing is real cool. So anyway, there we go. That makes the thumbnail done. You got the Sea Lily's Bell. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be our preview coverage for The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening on Nintendo Switch. What did you guys think? Are you guys excited for this remake? Please tell me you are. I know I am. Sep September 20th can't come soon enough. And I'm going to be streaming this game all the way into the very end until we beat it in one go. So I want you guys to be there. It's going to be super fun. So it gives you a little hint 
of where to go next. It says waterfall. It's hidden in the waterfall. And then, of course, we fade to the end. Guys, that's it for my 10-minute coverage. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, be sure to leave a big like on the video and share the video with a friend who may enjoy gameplay of The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. Exclusive footage right here. Make sure you guys are all subscribed, turn on notifications, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.